So in Chicago uh, at Northwestern University, I work on regenerative medicine and I work on the nanotechnology of regenerative medicine. Uh, our group uh, was, uh, 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 was a uh, proponent of the use of nanotechnology in regenerative medicine uh, starting about 15, 16 years ago during the early phases of nanotechnology. I was going to say that was towards the beginning. Yes, that was, that was the beginning. So can you explain right. to people what nanotechnology means? So nanotechnology means uh, designing uh, matter, designing materials uh, and devices uh, with sizes that are on the scale of nanometers. And so a nanometer is uh, a, a dimension that is equivalent to taking a hair and dividing it uh, about a hundred thousand times, a single hair strand. So that's a very, very small uh, dimension. So that's one nanometer. And so I work uh, creating structures that have dimensions of 10 nanometers, perhaps 15 nanometers, uh, chemically, molecularly designed to have function in regenerative medicine. So for example, we can customize uh, structures that will grow bone or will regenerate the spinal cord or will regenerate cartilage or muscle uh, or blood vessels uh, where they are needed. And so it's a very exciting uh, activity, very, very exciting research. This afternoon I, I, I told the audience about uh, three recent stories uh, on our work. And uh, one of them uh, was uh, a project uh, of the last few years, which was just published uh, in a top journal in nanotechnology called Nature Nanotechnology. And it was about designing nanostructures that have sugar molecules on their surfaces. So not the sugar that you eat or that you put in your, in your coffee, but uh, sugars in a very specific structure. And uh, these sugar molecules on the surfaces of fiber-like nanostructures, they make bone grow like crazy uh, in an unprecedented way. And, and the reason that they do that is because the presence of those sugar molecules on our structures um, mim that it, it mimics a biological process uh, whereby proteins in biology that are specific to grow bone, uh, they attach to sugar molecules. And this way, they are in, in the best position to signal cells to make bone. And we were able to imitate or to mimic this natural environment in our nanostructures using our nanotechnology. And uh, we actually tested this in vivo, and, and it worked. And, and we're very excited about now translating this into the clinic. So when you say translate to the clinic, what would that look like for somebody that's coming in the door? What would, what would you use this for? Well, for example, uh, right here in Vail, you have the famous uh, Dr. Philippon, who does fantastic uh, work as a surgeon. And he's interested in cartilage regeneration in the hip which solves a lot of problems. So, so if, if, in thinking about clinical translation, I would, I would see uh, Dr. Philippon loading our materials in, in some kind of syringe and actually using that material, which looks like toothpaste, actually, if you look at it, looks like the toothpaste you use to brush your teeth every morning. And, but it is composed of these tiny structures that we talked about, designed to, in this case, to grow cartilage. And so, so he, he's actually seen the material and he thinks it would be really fantastic to be able to use it because it would be very easy to deliver it to the patient right at the site where the patient needs the cartilage to be regenerated. What I bring with me after this weekend is just the thought that I want to keep interacting with the folks here in Bale, with the, you know, the, these brilliant surgeons 
uh, and, um, in, in work closely with them to facilitate the translation to the clinic. Uh, it, it is indeed a very exciting prospect. I mean, what I learned this weekend and, and have also learned it in the past and other occasions when I have been here uh, is uh, the fact that nothing can replace the knowledge that surgeons have and the experience they have in understanding what is translated, you know, uh, 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 what, what can be translated uh, and, and what cannot be translated into the clinic. Um, I think that they are definitely aware through their experience on what is the best way to do that. And so um, I have the great privilege to be working with them. Uh, and I owe this to uh, Mike Shannon and Mary Sue Shannon, who are uh, uh, sponsored some of our work. And, and Mike Shannon was, in fact, the person that put me in contact with uh, everybody here in Vail. And so uh, it's very exciting indeed. Thank you so much.